All right, all right. Michael Cummings here, aka Coach Cummings. Super, super excited about this webinar and who we have on. Yes, you see him in one of your corners here. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Carl Whoa. Sterling. Um, it, it, and Carl's an outstanding individual, like from uh, to childhood on. The guy was a professional drummer uh, at age 14, opening for Dizzy Gillespie and Spyro Gyra and, you know, just an, an outstanding, uh, you know, pedigree of uh, kind of kind of the, the musical talent, which we can talk about a little bit later, as I think a lot of those same traits and characteristics feed into being a health coach and uh, and, and doing what you do. But uh, Carl, um, he's a neuro rehabilitation specialist and educator. Carl has been all literally all over the planet um, educating and, and speaking on neurodegenerative diseases, uh, in particular Parkinson's, which is the focus of of today. Um, he's the founder and CEO of the Parkinson's Global Project, which I want to ask you about in a minute. And then the architect and creator of the Parkinson's Regeneration Training, uh, also an author. And we're going to get to his books in a second because they're. <laughs> There, there's a lot. And at BlazePod, uh, we get people all the time asking us how to use BlazePod with, uh, for individuals with Parkinson's. And so it was it just like light bulb. I'm like, Carl, he's our guy. We have to do this. So the, first off, Carl, thank you so much for your time, for being on. We're super excited to, to have you. And I think the question I want to first start with is, is how did you get into the field of uh, of Parkinson's and working with individuals with uh, neurodegenerative disorders, et cetera, et cetera. Well, before I answer that, um, I am honored to be here, Michael. Thanks a million. This is a great opportunity for me. It, it's like, this is like a big deal, man, because Blaze Pod is just so amazing, wonderful, quality, versatile. There's so much we can do, we'll talk about today. But also you have uh, you have some of the, my favorite therapists, Dr. Wilk for one of them, uh, Kevin, using these things, you know, and I mean, who, who's, who better than that to learn from, right? But there's so many people out there using these. Um, so again, thank you. I'm really honored to, to join you today. How did I get into it? Oh, man, I'll give <laughs> you the shortest version of the story I can. Yes, at 14, I was out drumming professionally in the union and all that kind of stuff and went through that over the course of decades um so it'd be about 33 years at the point of 33 so when i was 47 that's 15 years ago what happened was um i had you know eating too much drinking too much not moving you know indulging living the 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 lifestyle of a a drummer who didn't move much and ate too much and did everything wrong. Uh, so if you, you know, go back to the physical I had that there. That was the defining point of everything. Uh, my doctor looked at me, and he's a really cool guy. Um, um, my former doctor, I should say, because he went on to do other things. So he he lectures me uh, respectfully, politely, and sternly, dude. As they do, you're headed down the wrong path and if you continue this path you're gonna be in serious trouble i'm 6'2 uh i was close to 300 pounds type 2 diabetes high blood pressure neuropathy in my feet and a lot of other problems so i was so scared that i went out to the car after the physical in tears got some crying out of the way called up a personal trainer i know his name is uh, i just have to mention him um Eric Prager, an amazing trainer, and he kicked my butt. I borrowed money from credit cards. I maxed out every card for one year. I, I took all the money I could because I didn't have any money. I'm a drummer. You know, what do you expect? I'm not with Sting or anybody earning thousands <laughs> per week or night. Yeah, you know, I'm doing the fifty, seventy five hundred dollar club gigs, and on a good weekend, we do two weddings, and I might have like five hundred dollars that weekend. Yeah, so that's how that lifestyle was. Um, hence the reason for eating so much free food <laughs> because I couldn't buy food. <laughs> well, that's an exaggeration, but no, it's true about eating too much. Anyways, um, I went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
pretty much every week for a year, one on ones. On Tuesday, Thursday, I went to his gym and I did what he told me on my own. And I lost 70 pounds. I reversed my diabetes. I went pre diabetic, then no diabetes, neuropathy gone, blood pressure down. Actually, at this point in my life, I've never been stronger and I've never been healthier thanks to the higher power or whoever, but I worked my butt off for it. Okay, so I decided if I could feel this good, I want other people to feel this good. How, what could I do? Because drumming was really just, I was good at it. And not great. It's just a natural. So, you know, just really not that hard. I mean, I'm versatile, professional, show up, do the gig, play appropriately for the style, you know. It wasn't the Carl show, it was whoever show it was, not mine. And got a lot of work, grateful. But, you know, um, I decided that I felt so good, I want to help people. So I happen to know somebody who also was a jazz musician. I don't know if you know, anyone knows Dr. Brent Brookbush, Brookbush Institute, New York City, one of my closest friends in my life and my number one mentor, number one. We talk literally communicate every single day still. Brent said, well, if you want to be a personal trainer, do National Academy of Sports Medicine, because if you don't, I will kill you. <laughs> so I did that. <laughs> Six months later, I'm a trainer. I'm training a few people doing like a weight loss. About a year later, I'm like, you know, this is not enough, man. I, I got to know more because weight loss is one thing when you're moving. But what about the diet? So I went back to school at Syracuse University nutrition program that was my degree program um i wanted to add that to my scope of practice here's where parkinson's comes in so i'm in a class first semester and one of the uh professors comes up to me jerry evinsky love him love him he lives with parkinson's he says i hear you're a trainer i have parkinson's will you help me I'm like oh. okay well, i didn't have any clue what to do nada nothing this is the fall of 2012 did you know anything about parkinson's at that point like what it what it was i thought it was all a tremor and that's what just about everybody thinks when i meet them uh or or they they are learning oh isn't that the one with the tremors well because we we see who's the most like probably what was it michael j fox was kind of the the one that brought into the main stay and that's all that people would see yeah Yeah, is that he would have a a quote-unquote tremor I mean, we can go into details on that later, but to to finish the story, basically, yeah. I, I said yes, but I also knew I had an avenue to go, and that was my son was uh, had taken two years, he did two years of med school at Hershey Penn State, but he had taken like, well, close to three years and was working on his PhD at the same time in neurodegeneration of the brain. That's not the name of it. I don't know the name of the degree. It's big words I can't pronounce, but it had to do with that. I called him that night. I'm like, dude, I got a situation. He wants to work. What do I do? He says, well, I don't know, but I'll plug you in with my mentor, Dr. Shu Mei Wong. So Dr. Shu Mei Wong, thank you. She's an amazing neurologist who's very pro-movement, pro-neuroplasticity, pro-multitasking, pro-reactive training, pro-sufficient muscle mass, pro-everything we need to be doing as humans to stay upright, move safely, move better, live well and all that. So she, the end of the story is um, really the beginning of the next chapter. And that was my ADHD, ADD, total OCD nerd geek had to go down that road. And I never turned back. At this point, (laughs) I started my own podcast. It's almost 10 years. First interview was Brent. Before I left, said, give me two names. He gives me Emily Splickle, Perry Nicholson. Within three weeks, I'm back down in Jersey because I live four hours from. I drove down and interview him. Come back, interview her. I ended up teaching for her. That launched my teaching career. If you, well, teaching platform right. for years with her, and I absolutely loved it. And uh, uh, there was a demand for Parkinson's. People saw my postings, so I decided to put together a course. And that's how I got into Parkinson's. And now I have a clinic here in central New York, which I'm very proud of because we have stuff here that people just don't have. And like, we're really, I'm blessed truly from whatever higher power and, 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 and work hard, but lucky we get referrals from PTs, doctors, uh, and, and businesses been just 
really growing exponentially. And BlazePod is very much part of what we do. We have a, a, um, a lot of different training ideas in there for, let's say, you know, uh, cognition. Let's talk about just reaction time and cognition. She's talking about how uh, there are different modalities of cognition. There are different domains, I should say, of cognition. For example, you put out some uh, some targets, maybe those, those round agility dots or whatever, right? The small ones, big ones, whatever. You got you know, a red one, you got a yellow one, you got a green, a blue, or whatever. And so we can cue the patient or the client, okay, we want to do right foot red, left foot green, right foot blue, left foot orange, right foot this, right foot, or th things like that. So what's that called? Well, that's called decision-making. You have to say which foot to use to get on the color that was assigned to you, okay? Um, that's called decision-making. There are a lot of different things we can use for decision-making, but actually this really comes in super handy with reactive training on lights because, you know, one of the things we'll use is, use is uh, just for example, blaze pod which I, I found out about years ago and i there are other companies out there too and there's some really nice stuff but these are so versatile and you can create your own stuff in the app which i need to do more of but like one of our favorite things to do in the blaze pod app is for example and i think it's in one of the videos that people might see during this is uh, it's an element of the stacking. Okay, stacking is a whole different subject, but um, it's involved in this stacking process. Okay, so we'll talk about stacking in a minute. Right foot, blue, okay, yeah, so left foot, purple, purple no green but there's right always going to be you got a it. green one, let's say. If I assign green, don't you hit green. It. So... Great cross right, over great red, rotation. or right, blue, left, here we go with that darn purple, or whatever we assign. Don't ah, hit perfect. green. This That's is also good. decision making. Mm -hmm. I can set it up for a minute, two minute, three minute. I do three minute rounds. I'll tell you why. One minute's not long enough for most people. Two minutes is starting to get challenging. Three minutes gets into cognitive fatigue, which is one of the best things we can do for our brain neurochemically. That comes out of Stanford. That's Dr. Andrew Huberman. So, all the stuff, if you want details, we can go down the rabbit hole on any of this stuff. But the neurochemicals involved with cognitive fatigue, like you want to stop, you want to want to stop, but you are not supposed to stop that extra 45 seconds, 50 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is at the end, beyond the two minutes. Two minutes didn't seem like enough for most of three minutes is definitely enough. That is some of the healthiest stuff we can do with the norepinephrine and the acetylcholine that is released in the brain during cognitive fatigue. This stuff is like magic in the brain. It helps with neuroplasticity and improving the connections of these firing patterns synaptically that are happening between neurons. Whereas Without the fatigue, you'll still have a benefit, to benefit, but you won't have those neurochemicals released nearly as much, and you want those, and those are magic. We have versatility in BlazePod. We can create our own things. We can create so many different things. I mean, this guy, you're the one who showed me. I, you showed me one of the things we do. I can't remember which one. When we're sitting in the lobby of that hotel in San Diego, and you and Farber were with me, right? We're going through these things. Oh, man, I can do this. Holy cow, this is great. So, you know, come right back and start doing that stuff. And, um, you know, we we integrate these, though, with a lot of different things. Um, other movement, whether it's balancing on a surface that's moving underneath you, like that reacting board, or even enhancing that with the step and connect pads on the board, maybe over some hurdles with all that going on plus lights and maybe it's just they're all blue and you just put them out as you go along and there's no reactive training it's just coordination right. weight shifting while you're being moved around on a ram randomized unpredictable movement pattern by the board on a step and connect pad over a hurdle to land that ball of the foot on the light and we use it with boxing is it's there's so much we can do with decision making and 
cognitive and reaction time. Um, it's really important because the what we want is the benefits of what we do here to go out the door. If they don't go out the door, what's the use? You know, I'm not doing anything to help them if I can't have benefits out there. So I actually want people to almost fall down here a lot. I want them to almost fall 10, 15, 20 times per session per hour because how when we start to fall, but we react in time to recover from the fall, that does go out the door. So what happens is we don't let them fall. We provide safety measures, whether it's some rails, heavy duty, or I'm there, right? To, I'll scoop in and grab them up. I mean, I'm not shy. I've done it. I'll continue. But, you know, we're not going to let them fall. But we want them to get the feeling of going down without going down because we don't want injury. The only way to get the feeling of recovering from a fall is to almost fall a lot. And normal movement won't predicate that. So we need to uh, do abnormal movement with cognition. This is where, if you want me to stop at any point, tell me, but I, I do want to talk about the stacking real quick, because let's take, for example, another area where the lights are integrated um, beautifully. We pick a movement. Maybe it's just not on the board. Maybe it's just on the floor doing a sidestepping, or maybe it's cross body patterns. So we know when we put the hands or the feet cross the midline of the body is really good for the hemispheres of the brain because they communicate better together. They wire better together. And it's just good for us, right? It's a good, healthy thing for all people to do. So we can add something to that. Maybe now we add uh, play and catch with a ball. Uh, maybe it's the ball with the letters on it. And we have an assignment. When you catch the ball, the first letter you see, you have to tell me a name of a city or a country or a car or a plant or a vegetable or a person or whatever. Uh, we have other topics too, like birds. <laughs> we have some experts in here on all kinds of stuff, right? All right. But, we're getting uh, into orthology. Now I'm going to stop you. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Okay. <laughs> But maybe we do that and we mm. throw the lights at maybe do the lights first and then add the ball or do the ball, add the lights. So now maybe you do have right as one color, left as another color as you're going down the thing. It doesn't really matter. What what matters is that we add as many things as we can add to their, let's say, cognition during movement or multitasking skills, like hopefully a minimum of two things, maybe three to four more modalities, lights almost always being one of them in some form or other so that we can really overload them, make them fatigue, which is very healthy, make them feel like they might lose their balance and fall, but not fall. And then what happens? I'm almost at the end here. They do this for a number of sessions, a number of weeks, sometimes months, and they don't fall either anymore there are people who come in who were falling like once a week. They don't fall anymore, or maybe it's once every six months. This yeah. is what we're here for. That's it. Yeah, I, I especially like, because a lot of people who will see BlazePod being used, it's it's athletic. There's It's really quick to tap, and, and, they're, and they're moving, they're moving. And, you know, with some of the things you're talking about with stacking or making a drill hot by you know, some, some of what you do is you just have the lights there for distraction, or you have the lights there. And some of these lights, you, you can identify different things. Like if it goes green, talk about birds. If it goes blue, talk about whatever while they're walking on that balance True. beam. So your multimodal approach and your creativity in utilizing this is one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on, because it is, it departs from the norm of what most people see. What most people see with BlazePod is very fast, very dynamic. Well, guess what? When you have a brain, when you have a degenerative brain disorder, you're not fast. And so what you have done is you're helping them do this. And in fact, one of the videos we're going to show with that, that, that crossover, your right leg green, he says, I'm trying, I'm trying. He, he did. He, yeah. That's Bob. Yeah. I and love Bob it. Has, he's, he's, yeah. That's, that's the block, right? It's like, he yeah. knows what to do and he's trying to do it as fast as possible, but something's not working. And you actually have a very nice demeanor in, in your coaching aspect, like, okay, okay. Uh, it's, that's a whole nother psychological component to it, but he eventually does cross over and you reward yeah. his crossover, great crossover, which is great coaching. Um, but it's, 
it's not as fast and dynamic as you normally see these things, but that's okay. what we're talking about today. Uh, Bob experiences a few different symptoms of Parkinson's. Um, one of them is not a tremor. So if anyone wants to know, it's true that not everyone with Parkinson's gets a tremor. He had no tremor at all. But of the five symptoms that are motor symptoms, uh, most people know of four. There are five. Um, you have tremor, and that would be like a resting tremor, like they're just resting and it's it's going. All right. Well, he doesn't have that, but he has the other four. Bradykinesia is slowness of movement. He moves slower. Freezing is actually uh, its own thing, and it kind of falls into this next motor syndrome. It's called akinesia, and the definition of akinesia is a temporary loss of voluntary movement. So it could be that he freezes up because uh, it could be a distraction uh, a big distraction for a lot of people. You're going to hear this all over the place if you talk to people with Parkinson's doorways. There's a lack of dopamine. Oh, there are a lot of pro a lot of potential issues, but one of them that is not uncommon is uh, a lack of dopamine in not just the brain, even with the medications. It's still not the same as naturally producing dopamine, which is what they're lacking. The retinas have dopamine. And if it's insufficient dopamine in the retina, we can have some death procession and contrast challenges. So you'll see people oftentimes, they're walking across the room beautifully, they get going, and then they're fine. And then they're like three, four steps from the chair they're going to sit in, or the counter they're going to stand at, or the doorway they're going to go through, or a, a surface change in a floor, like hardwood to carpet to whatever. And they stall because like, where is that door frame exactly? Or a person, an oncoming person. This is another big one. Crowds. I remember being out on that same trip where I saw you this year. I took a friend of mine to breakfast, a musician friend up in Granada Hills. And we go out and he's distracted during while we're eating. And I'm like, Jeff, are you okay? Yeah, man. It's just that there's like 20 people over there between here and the exit. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get through all of them. Hmm. All he has to do is walk. Easy for me to say. He's strategizing. Who is a fall risk? What is a fall risk? Do I have to go around the table? Do I have to step over this thing? I mean, so these are going on even um, oftentimes before they start moving. So let's go back to Bob okay, in yeah, this so video. We'll I set him up in a semicircle because I want to make sure he had color assignments, yeah. including a do not hit you something. I think it was green in that one. Yep. Yeah. And you so if it. the right foot is hitting great whatever, crossover, great rotation. red, let's say, but red shows up on the left, he again. needs to cross over. Ah, perfect. Beautiful. It's a good move. Good. You've got um, hemispheres of the brain connecting better because they're you're crossing the midline. You have the sort of a rotational aspect to it, possibly, even though the standing foot probably won't pivot because you're only on one leg as he moves over. But he's also sh shifting his weight. So his body needs to and brain need to calibrate and readjust so he stays upright. That's what our brain, our brain wants us to be safe, like Perry Nicholson always says. Number one job of your brain and your nervous system is keep you safe. So in that case, it's stay upright. Um, but he also has, so let's go to symptom number three, because symptom number, number one, again, tremor, he doesn't have that. Bradykinesia, slow, slow, slowness of movement. Akinesia, yeah, we did mention that, temporary loss of voluntary movement. So he may know, I've got to hit that red light, but it's going to take me time. I just can't get the foot to move, which... Now I can finish what I was saying about Blaze Power. What I love is is the extreme adaptability, or let's say flexibility in creating your own exercises, including how long it takes for the light to go off. I might yeah. want to give him 20 seconds or 10 seconds per light instead of three or five because he might actually need it. Otherwise, people get so frustrated. Oh, God, I can't get a light in three seconds or five seconds. So we need to give them some it's going to be individualized based on the person's ability but it's also going to be just enough just short enough time to be challenging 
And while we're at it, we might as well talk about the next motor symptom, which is a serious radiokinesia, um, akinesia, rigidity, stiffness. He has a lot of that. And then postural instability, which is just basically you're just not stable. So that's a, responsible for more falls than the other four put together combined. Yeah. So that video, that's a really long explanation, but you're, and I was thinking as he, I was sending these to you, I said, man, people are going to look, they might think this is boring. In fact, one of the, uh, I love YouTube trolls because one of the blades pod things I put up, got a couple comments. Oh, dude's wasting his time or whatever, whatever. If you understood how difficult it was for that guy to do what he was doing, you know, I don't waste my time responding to those people. They can comment. It boosts my my rankings. Yeah. <laughs> I want people to see what you have and what I have. So uh, but but it seems like such a simple, simple thing. A semicircle, right this, left that, don't hit green. This is a major deal for this guy. Correct. Well, you brought up two points that I think are super important that people, uh, you know, able-bodied persons don't realize with people who are struggling from, you know, any sort of uh, brain trauma, even spinal cord or nervous system trauma is one is fear. It's like they're in this state of threat all the time. And two, things don't work when they're, tr when they know what to do, they just can't make that work. And that's really frustrating. And so working with someone like you and giving them the opportunity to do these things uh, is pretty cool. And I, that leads us to this next video. Cause I really enjoyed this next video. The, the, the woman with oh, Alzheimer's that you had balancing oh, on the balance beam, you were doing some pretty, I mean, someone would look at that video and go, Oh my gosh, how boring. Well, yeah. Exactly. It's like it's boring when you, when, when your brain starts to have some, some issues sometimes, but uh, talk about that video. That video is, um, Beautiful what do we call that? Uh, Anna Thompson multitasking, uh, story plus balance, which is something that I, I thought okay. was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. This this Good this work. is now we're getting in. into the mojo. Like the toes in. It's, doing it's so really much well. fun. Not See, easy. that's the thing, though. Just a digression for like ten seconds. Mm -hmm. I was primarily a let's do it uh, again. What do they call it? Contemporary jazz musician. Yeah, I did all styles except metal and country. Well, I did do country yes, ones, right. but anyways, uh, mm -hmm. there, there, I, I have do. this improvisational ability mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that is allows for a lot of creativity. Well, guess what also allows for it? My work allows for creativity big time. And this is my expression of it now is the work I do. So blaze pod allows for creativity. Another reason I like them so much. So yeah this lady has she lives with alzheimer's now anna thompson's story the anna thompson story if you were to google that look it up uh you can find it with two different endings and it's pretty interesting it's basically three sentences one long first sentence followed by two shorter ones one paragraph it also comes with a scoring sheet because it's considered around the world a standardized memory testing tool Oh, it's wow. a standardized memory test. So the Anna Thompson story, there are other ones too. Um, that's funny is I can't remember the name of them, but uh, but this is the most common one or the most used, let's say, for memory. So you read this story to the person twice. I mean, I think in a formal setting, and I've been through the formal research settings with this, I think you read it twice and then you say, okay, tell me as many details as you can remember. Oof. Read it to them again. What do you remember? Read to him again. What do you remember? And I forget the exact formality because we don't use it uh, unless we're doing a, a like a little pilot data or white paper study here, which we do. Just not currently at the moment. We don't have one. We have one coming up soon. But it's uh, it's one of the things we use, and we will use scoring. It's just been a year, and I can't remember the. But but you know, we use it informally. Read the story. Well, she got to know this story fairly well after a couple of visits and she was practicing at home and her husband was helping her. Well, the story itself, you could just sit there and go over it, which we'll do. But now we, we decided we're going to add more to it. Why don't we put you on the balance beam and tell me the story? So you're moving and thinking, you know, sometimes that's not easy to do for any of us. 
Um, well, what if we add some lights to it? So we put up the blade spots. We put them, I think they might have been all blue. Lights out, all blue. That's the name of it in my app. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that means there's no reactor training. It's just when you pass the light, you step on it, you put it out. When you get to the last light, five seconds, they come back on, do it again. So that's what she was doing in this video is going down the balance beam. Again. It's a gymnastics beam I got from somebody, right? It's on the floor. It's only, it's like a two by four in thickness, yeah, low, or two by six. Low balance beam. But it's soft. So it's actually hard to balance on for most people. It's a challenge, I should say. I got lights and I want her to cross over. I can't remember in the video, she was crossing over. The she was, beam. it was in, in, in line and she was moving like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Telling us the yes. story. I mean, Good work. Dig those toes we, in. uh, Dig the toes in. Uh, it's another really thing. Well. It's called, I call it stacking. Okay. We're going to take a movement or maybe we'll take a story as the foundation. Now let's do let's it do while it you're moving. Now let's there add lights to the movement or it could be movement. Let's add lights. Oh, by the way, tell me a story. Yes. It just right. depends upon the day. And I sometimes just what I think of and what order. Those do. But that also becomes a learning event. This is another humor, Huberman thing, Andrew Huberman. Um, and I don't know where the research is from. I know he didn't make this up and there's citations in his writings and his podcast, but out of Stanford, when you're doing something like any of this stuff, you are in what they call a learning event. Yeah, and that, it's an exercise too, but she is learning, she's reciting, she's practicing, and repetition is the mother of skill. Whoever learned how to ride a bicycle? Maybe most of us. Did you ride perfectly the first time? Of course not. After you fall down enough and lose your balance and have problems, all of a sudden you start to go and you go and you go, and it's the same with all this stuff, man. It's the same thing, and Blaze Pod's a part of it because we want the variation that BlazePod offers to add to the dimension, the depth of the number of exercises we can include in one learning event, one exercise event, so that these synaptical firing patterns, which we should address real quick here, are, are you're rewiring the brain to develop a skill that you may have lost or right. maybe it's to develop a skill you never had in the first place. I mean, we can do that any day, right? I'm still learning Spanish. I'm relatively fluent. I'm not there yet, but 16 trips to Mexico teaching and four years in high school and two semesters. Yeah, I'm getting there, but I talk, speak it almost every day. So it's repetition, but we, we, we when we have a movement disorder, we have Alzheimer's, we have hippocampus primarily affected. Alzheimer's, substantia nigra inside the basal ganglia, primarily primarily affected, and maybe some striatal nigro, uh, nig let me say it wrong, striatal, nigro striatal um, connection. Those will have- We'll have Simon adult. subtext it on top, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Um, it, it's in my book, I, it's uh, nigro striatal uh, um, connection because you'll see diminished dopamine um, uh, presence in the imaging on DAT scans, which is a a contrast scan of the brain. It's like an MRI. We're using contrast, but specifically to look at dopamine levels. And that's a lot of times what they'll use to diagnose, although it's said that it's not the end-all, be-all. It's probably not because it could be a few different problems. But at least you can narrow it down to a movement disorder and you can see what's going on. And um, but But the beauty of the brain is the plasticity offers this ability um, a lot of experts say it's probably the cerebellum that takes on a lot of the responsibility for developing new neural firing pathways. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the brain can do this no matter where it is, that it can re it can wire itself so that, you know, look at the nun study back in the eighties, right? All these nuns with Alzheimer's who didn't exhibit a sign of it because they were so busy in this particular, whatever, I don't know, convent or whatever doing so many other things that in the autopsies, they actually had a new, like a new area that had grown in their brains that took on the responsibility of the hippocampus, which was dying 
and cause the Alzheimer's, but they never had a symptom because they developed abilities in another place. So we can all do this. It doesn't mean you're going to cure the disease. It doesn't mean necessarily you can even slow it down, although it's probable you can. You're, that, that's other stuff to slow it down. It's mostly cardio, BDNF. That's a whole different subject. But managing disease symptoms, managing movement, managing staying upright, managing quality of life, that can be done almost all the time. I uh, want to move on to the, your, the third video, uh, the, the third video that we're going to talk about. Um, and I, I like this one because um, I've known about a group. We blaze pop partner with a group called rock steady boxing. Oh yeah. And they're great, man. They, they basically tout them. you know, they don't tout, they, 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 they substantiate that a lot of their patients uh, through boxing have slowed uh, their Parkinson's uh, have slowed the rate of de degeneration and have are feeling great. And yeah, I've seen video of a woman who uh, day one couldn't make things happen. And, you know, after three months, she's throwing punches at this bag. And so walk us through your third video, because you did something interesting where you actually added the blaze pod uh, reactive lights to not only to the bag itself, but you have uh, two, uh, a few on the ground. So walk us uh, through yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, that setup and then why uh what what were you doing for that uh individual get the book called spark everybody it's probably 20 years back but the it stands the test of time this book is absolutely um the the, the definition of what it is to elevate your heart rate to increase improve focus to um, improve neuroplasticity potential to slow disease progression. And the reason it is, so take a rock steady, for example, you're throwing punches, even if you go in and you're not throwing them that hard at first, or maybe ever, if you're working hard anyways, to do whatever you can doing your best and you get the heart rate up, whether it's cycling, swimming, running, uh, rowing, punching, Elevated heart rate causes a production of a neural growth chemical called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. A lot of people have heard of it. Also, the short for that is BDNF. This is also known by Rady at Harvard as and others in the industry. of, of uh, They call it miracle growth for the brain. Why? Well, it is created by the grain, brain after, you know, it depends on who you talk to. Is it 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes of relatively vigorous exercise well you know if you're going a half an hour hour session and something you're probably going to have it if you have your heart rate up enough during that hour and you're going to get it and even if it's a little it's created in the brain actually I don't know how i just know that it is but i also know that it does circulate in the brain it attaches to brain cells and it helps to um, preserve cellular structure cellular function helps to slow the death of dying brain cells. And according to Wendy Suzuki out of New York University, who's also a best-selling author, and I've gotten to know her and interviewed her a couple of times, this also helps to give um, birth to new brain cells in two areas of the brain. As of right now, um, there are only two areas that we know for sure can give birth to new brain cells. Maybe there's more, but right now, according to Wendy and uh, Rady and all the others, it's two hippocampus and the olfactory bulb. Okay, well, hippocampus is Alzheimer's. Okay, so in a Maria Shriver study from, I believe, six years ago, I, I, I was just talking with somebody today about this event I was at with the Maria Shriver and Dale Bredesen, the author of The End of Alzheimer's. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I interviewed him too. So it was fun because <laughs> this brag. is the nerd in me, oh, though. Man. This is the geek in me. I need to know this stuff. I want to hear from the people who are making the difference out there, doing the research, finding out what's happening, like what's working. Well, in the Shriver thing, I forget how many people. I think it was 200, and I believe that on the front end of six months of exercise, cardio, 30 minutes a day, six, five days a week for six months, 
194 out of 200, and I could be wrong on the number, so please forgive me, but it was a high percentage after six months of just cardio. Again, 30 minutes a day, five days a week for six months, had reversed Alzheimer's. And in some cases, reversed, because this was all early stage on, uh, on Alzheimer's. It wasn't like advanced. So we're all talk we are talking early stage, but still imaging on the brain showed at the end of six months, no Alzheimer's. Why? The hippocampus can give birth to new brain cells and cardio at elevated heart rate is the thing that's going to do it the best. But in now finally going back to video number three, we're talking about, yes, uh, this gentleman, it, oh, it, this oh, was oh, not oh, really a, like a cardio okay. exercise okay. Um, in this particular instance, oh, although he had been doing yeah. cardio punching the bag on the other side where there weren't lights then we move them around okay here's a couple minutes of like let's bring the heart rate down let's get you recovered was also working on his cardiovascular makes you think doesn't sort of like interval training you know spike the heart rate for a couple minutes allow it to come down and then get it up and then down because that's so good for us right um so this was more of a we have you kind of brought up some really interesting, like the stacking and all that. We're really going after not the cardio. We're going after the neuroplasticity. We're after the, how fast can you react to this and get it right? You know, even if they get it wrong, it's still better than not doing it because they're focusing and the fatigue factor neurochemicals are so important, but we do want them to get it right. And so you know, on one side of the punching bag, I didn't film it. I probably should have. He's going at it, you know, working up a sweat for a couple minutes. And then, boom, let's come around and do a minute or two of blaze pod thinking. Okay, we got cardio over here for that benefit to the brain. Now we got thinking over here, hands and feet. So you got to keep your, try to exercise your peripheral vision. See if you can find one main focus point where you can see all lights enough to react and hit without moving your eyes all the time. That's another skill, you know? So that's yeah. video number three. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really cool. It's really effective and it's, it's really fun. I mean, I think that's the other thing you have them standing up. So they're not in a, you know, yeah. precarious position you have to, and, and punching it, you don't square up when you punch, you have to, it, it's a, it's a contralateral movement. So if you're going to yeah. punch with your right, your left legs kind of got to be forward, depending on if you're, yeah. you know, jabbing or throwing straights. And so a lot of times you're switching movements all the time, which is, is that intersection or that yeah. uh, interchange of those hemispheres that are so important when looking at the holistic, healthy movement. Um, and, and I, I'm glad you went off on, on some tangents. I know there might be some, some people uh, consuming this webinar that are like over my Will head. Will he ever be quiet? <laughs> the primary uh, trust reason, me, it's not the first time I've been asked that question. <laughs> the primary reason we asked you on is because we had so many physical therapists that are using our product that have had kind of an influx of maybe not an influx, but people coming in with Parkinson's and are have seen uh, Blaze Pod used with individuals with Parkinson's. And so I was like, man, let's give them what they want. Again, I've referred a lot of PTs uh, to your body of work. Um, of which I kind of want to end this with because, um, you know, the uh, Carl has written uh, two books and is working on a third. His first one here is Parkinson's Regeneration Training. He also has a, a Facebook page under the same name, and I'll let you kind of tell your marks in a second. And then this one here is probably, I learned a lot on this one. This is probably my favorite because I'm like you. I am all about motivation and hope and positive psychology and being able to say, hey, I can get through this is uh, there's nothing that I don't think human beings can 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 uh, accomplish. I mean, we, I've seen so many incredible people do fascinating things. And so I have zero limitations in my thought process. Hope, belief, and empowerment. There you go. So it's Parkinson's Empowerment Training. Um, he says uh, the third book is coming out in a, in a year oh, and will oh, include God. a lot of his um, uh, training and experience with BlazePod, which mm -hmm. is awesome for us. Um, and so that would be great, but where can, where can our, uh, where can people find you, Carl, if they want more information about you, about what you're doing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank you again. And I will say this, 
I do go off sometimes. I'm aware of it. But usually there's a point, and I hope that the points are well taken by everybody because, you know, there's a lot of depth to this, man. There is a lot of depth. And the I will answer that, I promise, in a minute, is is if you have somebody doing these things and you can make it fun, if you can gamify, well, we're, 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 we're really, you know, our retention is quite high in our clientele. Maybe that's one of the reasons. They also know we care. That's the most important thing is we care. A recent study do, just came just came out. It's super interesting about that point. They said to learn a new skill, it takes four hundred and five rep four hundred to five hundred repetitions, unless the 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 person considers it play, and then it takes thirty to forty. Yeah. That blew my mind when I heard that. You know, John Rady from Harvard, I'm going back to him again, but he's been such an influence on me. He talks about the power of play. Actually, in my first book, Jackie Wu, who I love, is a movement person, and, and NKT, neurokinetic therapy instructor, too. She's absolute genius, everybody. She wrote a part of a chapter about play in book number one with some different things. But, you know, I've been to her workshops. She's been to mine and... and um, Play offers an advanced opportunity for engagement. Engagement offers more opportunity for learning and realizing results. So Rady talks about the power of play, the power of um, um, when we can gamify, we're, we're really, really, really going to make a bigger difference instead of the formal whatever i'm not, not criticizing anybody either i mean you know we do what we something's better than nothing but if we can make it better make it more fun make it more engaging and beneficial not just fluff there's got to be a reason behind it and if that offers last thing before i tell you where you can get a hold of me if that causes empowerment or something like wow i didn't know i could do this do you know how far that can go, man? It is unbelievable because I have literally, I have seen people in my travels around the world here in my clinic where I meet them and they're feeling, you know, maybe even their arms are crossed and they're kind of standoffish and they're feeling completely defeated and hopeless. One little thing, what, what you might consider to be kind of normally like a little thing, that one thing, you don't know what it's going to be, but if you get on to one thing, it causes that spark of possibility. And then I have seen people become completely optimistic and completely long-term, years of long-term committed, unstoppable. So you, as the therapist, for anyone listening, if you have potentially the power to change a life. And it ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's about we. We do it together. We do it with our patient. We do it with our client. It ain't the me show. It's the we show. This is about us. I care about their outcome. You give them hope. You got some serious fun times ahead. It makes it easier to make it fun when they have a little bit of hope. It takes time to get there sometimes. But my website is carlsterling.com. And it's Carl with a K. K A R L S T E R L I N G, just like it sounds. Carlsterling.com. Pretty much everything is right there. Links to social media. I do a lot of posting, especially Instagram and LinkedIn, seem to be really good for engagement, you know, responses and all that. So, but if you have any questions, you can reach me off the website. Just shoot me an email. I'll always answer. It might take me. A little bit sometimes, but if you text me, I'll definitely answer fast. I'm, a I'm on the West Coast, so I like to text Carl at 9 p.m. to see if he's still up. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, guys think a you... lightweight. I'm usually in bed by 9 15, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I was serious, lightweight. I was in bed at like seven o'clock when I was in San Diego, San Diego time. Oh, it's fast yeah. my bedtime. <laughs> ah, sleep is good. Yeah. Hey, man, thank you so much for being on. Again, you're a wealth of knowledge and our webinars are they're they're a little bit you know they're a little bit shorter, but a, a, you would you would crush a podcast. I would love to 
I could literally listen to what you're talking about because it's the world that we're in. It's the world that that we're, we're engaging in every day. And you've done so much homework and so much study and interviewed so many people that are the experts in this field that you're able to disseminate that uh, to us. And so I think you're a really valuable resource. And it's one of the reasons we wanted to have you on to give everybody who, because these webinars are free for us. We want to do these for the people who are really interested in helping out uh, others using BlazePod and, and creating, you know, high performance lifestyles uh, with BlazePod. So I really appreciate honored. your time this morning. Um, and yeah, reach out to Carl. Um, and thank you so much for being on, brother. Hey, thank you. I just, uh, just have to say, sadly, there's in the near future, the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, we don't know how long, there's going to be no shortage of people with these kind of health problems. You're needed now more than ever. Just trust me on that. The numbers are going up on everything. Dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, it's all on the rise. But the sooner they get control, knowledge, education is power, and then get moving and do these various things. I mean, there's a lot of potential there to help people a whole lot. So I'm honored to be here. Thanks, man. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Now everybody get out and elevate their heart rates with Blaze Pop. <laughs> BDNF, baby. BDNF. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Carl. You got it, brother. Take care.